Okay, we're recording. Okay, I'll call the meeting to order at 6.30 p.m. of the meeting of the policy committee of the library. All right, so uh, Megan had made some changes to the- uh, um, uh, Just a point of order, we have to approve the minutes. Oh, in the last sorry. Meeting. I'm just gonna share those quick. Yes, thank you for keeping me on the right track as usual. All right. Okay, did everybody get a chance to look at the minutes? Yes. Yes. And uh, can I have a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve the minutes of the what minute, April 8th meeting? No. 29th. April 29th. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyone second? Second. I'm going to abstain because I wasn't there. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. No discussion. Let's vote. All in favor of approving the minutes? Say bye. Aye. 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 Any opposed? And Terry's abstaining. Uh -huh. Okay, so the motion carries. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so I um, thought it might be best to at least get one person's um, edits on this, you know, rather than going, you know, going through this line by line. And um, I took the liberty of doing, you know, making proposed changes um, that are in blue. Um, and um, Megan, I think slightly above this, is there something before this? Uh, let me see. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, I, I thought, no, I guess we covered down a little. this. Yeah, we covered this. Um, I, was death taken out? I thought we were going to take death out, and I didn't see it taken out of your copy, but. Um, uh, for what part? In case of death. Now I don't see it there, though. Um, let me look through my paper notes then and see what we. What section are you referring to? I'm just, I'm just going there. Um, and okay. what page it was, it was, um, it was section six after retirement, but it's not. Okay, so you just took it out completely. I see that. Number six is blank. Right. On that page. So that, that used to talk about death or other termination, or that was the heading. So we took that out. <laughs> okay. Um, Megan, I had a question, sort of an overall question. Um, should I don't know whether this is the case or not, but I'm not an employment attorney. And it, do we ever think that it would be a good idea to have our po personnel policy reviewed by an employment attorney? Is that an option that's available? You can send it over to uh, Lawler to look at, or I could send it to um, Shay, who did the union contract. Okay, you know, I, I don't know if we're authorized to spend that money or, you know, to have it uh, reviewed by someone other than the town attorney, but um, it just occurred to me that we might want to make sure that we've not done anything in here that, you know, yeah, I, I can, I can wordsmith, but again, I don't know employment law. Um, Mary, your thoughts on that? Um, it's probably not a bad idea. Uh, given now that we have a union and, and we have so many things to answer to. Um, I mean, it could be something I we can do. I feel comfortable with John Shea because he knows us so well and he knows unions and contracts and so on and so forth. But, you know, quite frankly, you know, Marty Lawler would probably be less expensive. Well, we do have the, um, the funds set aside for Shea. So if you prefer Shea, we can cover the cost this year. You know what? Well, let's let's think about that. Let's just give, reflect on it a little. But it's yeah, probably have, a good idea, Robin. Um, just, we have to finish. We have to get into the shape that we we feel comfortable with first before right. anybody looks at it anyway. So we yeah, can make yeah. decision yeah, later. But, but it's but it's a, a point well taken. It's probably something we should we should pursue. Yeah, I've got one question on this thing too. You talk about 
regular employees through here. Is is that a standard term? I thought there was like full time or part time. <clears throat> the regular employee is a is a formal term. Well, I just I do want to point. Oh, Tia, did you raise your hand? Yeah, I did, but you, I'll, I'll get it after. Oh, I'm sorry. I okay. dropped the line. No, no. I'm going to fix my view. I'm only seeing one person at a time. Um, so it is, it is defined regular it's employee defined. front. Now, a lot, a lot of, oh, I'd say a good majority of this language comes from the town personnel policy. It looks like years back when it was revamped it was set to align with the town. So as like Robin, I was looking up some of your questions, I was matching them against the town's policy and that's where the language was all coming from. Okay. okay. All right. So I guess we can dive in now into the grievance procedure. The, uh, the only thing I, I just wanted to uh, butt in for a second, John Shea also, not only is he familiar with our union contract, but he was also familiar with our personnel uh, contract because we had to pull that up a lot as we were negotiating oh. the contract. So if you think about it, he has both yeah. sides of that. I, I, am I remembering that correctly? Yes. Okay. So, and I think uh, I would just say, since we do have some money in the contract, and I think that's an excellent idea, Robin, yeah. um, I, I was curious about that myself. I think that it would be great to have him just give it a once over just to make sure. Um, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I, I'm certainly not opposed to that at all. I, I think it would be a good step. Um, so just to go back, the, the thing we got rid of last time in the contract, you're referring to separation. It's, it's then, right, right where... Um, it's right above the letter C. You have a blank now there. I'm going to pull up my copy because I don't have it crossed out on our edits. So I just want to look up the original copy I sent everyone. May I ask you what page you're on? Because I wasn't at the 13, left. 13. Uh, 12 you. to 13. Thank you. Just give me one moment because I don't know why that looks like that. Using my Bethel Library mug, if anybody. <laughs> I'll use the old one. Yay! <laughs> All right, Robin. When I sent you that sec, um, the the draft, uh, death or other termination was still on the file. It must have been deleted um, with after I sent it. Okay. So it should, it should still be on there. So you know what, I, I'm going to share the, the file from our last meeting without your edits, because I know that one doesn't have any alterations to it other than what we discussed. So can you have yours? No, because I did, well, I, I didn't print it. Okay, let me see if I can have both open on different screens. And then if there's a question regarding edits, I will refer to the other one. Okay, so let me but, put that back in. Megan, I think that your edits, your edits were showing up on the one that I edited. I know, so, but on the on the copy I sent you, so I pulled up the one I attached and sent to you, and death and other termination is still on the draft from our last meeting. So, and I don't have it crossed out in our notes either. So we didn't remove that in the last meeting. Right, but if you scroll down from where you are now, on that page. Oh, it's not scrolling now because I opened another file. Okay, let me stop share and reshare. <laughs> All right, I gotta figure out which one is which. Tia look, got kicked out. Hold on a minute, I gotta let Tia back in. There she is. Screen okay. share. Okay, so this is your file. So I started marking up paragraph 12, which I think is a little, is, yeah. 
I, I no, I, I understand that. But I'm telling you is that number six should still be there. So I'm going to have to put it back in because we did not remove it in the last meeting. I thought and we did. We did. Wow. We talked about removing it because yeah. there was nothing there. It was just the heading that said death or other termination. death or termination and nothing okay. else. Then I'll take it out now. I just don't have it in my on my file from the last meeting. Mm -hmm. So if you want it removed, I'll take it out right now. So there will be no number six. Okay. You guys. All right. So now we're starting from 12. Right, but it doesn't. Oh, you see, my changes are not, they're not redlined or anything. So nobody can see what it was that I. This, this is all I, I got from you when I received it was the questions. So the, the red lines didn't show up? Let me see if maybe they're hidden. Hold on, I gotta move this. Uh, we'll get to this eventually, guys. <laughs> yeah, remember, we do have only till eight o'clock. Um, so we may have to set another <laughs> meeting. Okay, so view. Go into review, into review. review. And then um, show comment, uh, show, let's see. Oops. So I have comments, insertions, and formatting. Do it was, uh, see where it says simple markup? Drop that menu down, the first one. Uh, not, not, not on that, but. Get out of that. Okay, simple markup, all markups. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, right, so anything red and underlined is from your review. Right. It was blue when I sent it because it had a little contrast. But did, did anybody? Did everybody get this version? I don't know if anybody. I did. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, a lot of what I did was just structural. I thought things read better if it was organized a little bit differently. Um, and I don't, now, now that I've done this, I'm not sure what the best way of our discussing it is. Um, if, if people have already reviewed it, then maybe we could just take comments. If you haven't reviewed it, do we want to do this as we go? Or, um, I mean, again, it's what I've done for a lot of this is, um, is more just style than substance. Um, so anybody have a thought, um, should we just, I mean, or, do you want to all look at it later and let us know, if, let me know if there's any concerns about what we, what we don't discuss tonight. We can do that so that we can finish it tonight. Yeah. I think that'd be better. But and that we, won't work. Uh, I mean, we're probably going to agree with you, Robin. Yeah. If you exactly. want to finish it tonight, everybody has to let Robin know tonight if they have any problems with it. Otherwise, we'll have to have another meeting. Okay. Oh, I, I just, it's fine. I don't mind doing another meeting. I just want to make sure we're not trying to finish it tonight and then going back and reading it. No, I think what maybe what Mary, were you talking about just trying to get through anything that was substantive or that needed discussion? We'll try yeah, to do it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So. I think really the first thing I had to talk about was um, under step one. Um, you know, I didn't think we, we wanted step to say one where we're to step one at the bottom of that page. All right, just to clarify then, we're not approving all of the changes tonight. So we're not finishing it tonight. Okay. All right, then we can go ahead. Yeah, there's just, there's too much. There's no way we can, I, I don't yeah. think. Go through it all. So we want to do it right. Come on. Yeah. So in step one, I didn't think we wanted to have any employee who wants to complain. It's really they're making yeah. a complaint. Um, and um, I thought that we would want it, their complaints to be in writing in the first step. Now, Megan, I don't know, maybe if you want it to be more informal when they start with um, their complaints to their department head. But okay, hold on. Uh, I just have to figure out a way to make sure I'm marking each section we change because now I'm not going to use your file okay so just give me one moment to get organized come to do it on paper now it's really hard to edit by committee <laughs> you know right. i'm i'm gonna print out with robin's edits so i have something i can write on because now that we're going to be skipping around and not doing each section i have to make sure i track these changes 
Is there a reason why we wouldn't just go section by section and, and just try and get through as much as we can? We're going to have to have another meeting anyway, right? Tia, yeah, that's fine. That's yeah. That would be easier for me because otherwise okay. I have to yeah. mark each section we don't get to. Yeah, mark you're right. Sections we do. Oh. And I, I have to admit it this time of night, is, I've already been here for a while. It's a little rough for me to be bouncing back and forth. Okay. All right. So let's just start well, from, let's the get beginning from where we were. Okay. So I've taken out sec or suggest that we take out section B, which is application. Well, can everyone approve A first? Is well, that's what I was going to say. I've, I've, I haven't gotten finished talking about that. I've just moved what was in the application into into more introductory kind of language, um, and um, combined it into put it all up into A. So we say the formal grievance procedure applies only um, to complaints about the application of the policy and um, what it doesn't apply to, which was in in the application section. And um, and then it, we just start with what the different steps of the policy of the I'm sorry, which term are. appointment to a non renewal of term appointment or performance about what's term appointment. That's language that I picked up from uh, from what was apple under application, so I don't know, maybe. Um, Non-removal of a term appointment. What is a term appointment, Megan? Do you know? I have no idea. I... Yeah, I, I mean, I think I think what that I think what that. Oh, let me check some definitions and make sure it's not in there first before I say that. No, the only term is temporary employment. And term, you have a term employee. So it's probably, I assume it relates to a term employee who is an employee who has been appointed to a position for a definite time. And, and is that defined somewhere? Oh, it's term, term, yeah. term employee is defined in on page two. I mean, if that's the language that we use, it should say that a non-renewal of an employee term a term employee, so, something that refers back to that reference, because otherwise I read it and I was like, well, what's a term appointment? So so maybe we say a non-renewal of employment of a term employee? Yeah. What am I changing? Where it says it doesn't apply to a term appointment, that's the second line. Non renewal of a term appointment. All right, so, and not to non renewal of a term appoint, appointment. Am I getting rid of? I have too many files open. Okay. Page 13. Okay. So we are now changing. So you're okay. taking out, can you please read for me how you want it to be worded? Tia, yeah, see if this makes sense based on what you just said. Not, um, and not to non-renewal of, of the employment of a term employee. Like that? Employ, change appointment to employee in the next line. Does that, everybody think that's better? Or, uh -huh. or, okay. But I have a problem with it because a term employee is an employee who has been appointed to a position for a definite term. So isn't that every employee? No. No, because every employee a term says you're in this position for six months. Every other is you're in that position until you're declared no longer in that position or, you, or you're promoted out of it or whatever. A term so regular, regular employees don't have a 
aren't hired for a year and with oh, renewals, so right? Correct. Yeah. But in a regular employee is indefinite, correct? Unless it changes for a different job or a different. Right. And so what this is saying is that if you have somebody who is a term employee and you're not going to renew their contract, they cannot, this grievance procedure is not the procedure that they would utilize to contest the fact that their term has not been renewed. So that would be, uh, and this is just my own knowledge, that would be just if you eliminated a job? No, this is if we hired someone for, a, let's say we hired someone for a specific task to be completed in a six month period. So let's say we wanted to bring on like a marketing expert and we hired them. But isn't that a temporary employee? That's what this is. It's no. a oh, but there's two different things. There's a temporary employee and a term employee. Correct. But see a term, a temporary can't work more than 12 weeks. So you're like a seasonal or a temporary employee if you're less than 12 weeks. Right. A term employee is for a contracted period of time, which could be six months to a year. Um, it's defined by the board. Okay, okay. So it's necessary to keep it in there. And it's used in four different places in the contract right now. Okay. Five only two. And that to and that to the non -renew -renew renewal of a the employment. No, something's wrong there. Not to oh the word a should come out before. Okay. To the renewal of yeah employment of the term employee or the performance violations. Is there any way to make this bigger, Megan? Oh, we did this last time. Um, Go up to the box at the top. Next you. To the box. The only problem is as I make it bigger, I make it harder to see uh, from my end. Let me try. Oh. All right. Uh, let me see how big I can get it while I can still keep it on my screen. Okay, I'll just switch. Okay. That's much better. Thank you. Not to the non renewal or right non renewal of the employment of a term employee or to performance evaluations. Okay. Except employment and employee. I don't know. Okay. That's fine. Just take out the A. Yeah, that's good. Thank you, Megan. And not to, and not to, Shouldn't, I don't know, should the be in there and not to the non-renewal of the employment term employee? You could put a the there if you want. So you're saying put a the before non. Right. It's an awkward sentence, that's for sure. Yeah, it is a little awkward. Yeah. Every dog in my neighborhood's barking. I don't know if you guys can hear that. <laughs> it's the barking hour. Yeah. Weird. So let's go down a little to step one. So again, I, I didn't think making a, I thought making a complaint sounded better than just complaining. Well, I gotta figure out how to get it to show up on your screen because it's on mine. It is showing up. Yeah, it's showing up. It's, isn't it cut off or is it no. cut off on my screen? Oh. No, it looks fine. Okay, you can see it. I can only see half of it. So I'm gonna take your word for it. Okay. No, we have the whole screen now and it's and it's large. So okay. They, and in the second sentence um, before this personnel policy, the should come out. All right. I missed that. Seconds. Oops, up, go back up. Okay, step step one. Second yeah. sentence. Second sentence. Application of this personnel. Whoop. 
I, I know, but I can't see it to edit it yeah, unless I. Got it. All right. So, so the, this right now. So. If the, an employee wishes to make a complaint about the application of. This. Okay. All right. So here's my substantive question. And, and Megan, you can weigh in how you feel about this. This is a, the first step where they complain to their department head. Do you want to require that complaint to be in writing? Because right now it doesn't say that it's just as they have to report the matter to their department head. I'm fine with it being in writing. Okay. So then scroll down a little. And then in step two, there were, and, and in various points, there were references to appeal and really it's not, there's no appeal built in here. It's all about complaints, I think. Okay, can, can you go back up to one, step one and the five, no, 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 I'm sorry. Okay, so on the second page, on page 14. Um, so what you wanna say uh, on the third line, adjust the matter to the satisfaction of the employee within five days of the filing of the report. Shouldn't it be the complaint? Yes. I mean, what they just say in the second line, they shall report the matter, but in writing, but the complaint is fine to say the complaint. Yeah. Because a report implies that there is some, to me, some sort of an investigation or something. It's really, you're, you're filing the complaint. Right. And, and then you would say the complaint may be submitted, which may be submitted to the library director. Okay. Right? Yep. So the complaint should be paid. The complaint, comma, which may be submitted to the library director. Well, I don't think you, no, I think it says if, if the department head doesn't act, within filing of the complaint, the complaint may be submitted to the library director. I don't think you need which. If such department head cannot or will not adjust the matter to the satisfaction of the employee for five days, the filing of the complaint may be submitted to the library director. Like that? You need this, no, you need the second complaint after the comma. If, they, if, if it, within five days of filing of the complaint, for the department head, it's it's not resolved. Then it's going to be submitted. Is there a way to change there? All right, anything else that needs to be fixed here? I think we're good. Okay, so my question in step two, which is off in the side and that does get missed when you have the, uh, you know, when you blow it up, but it's much better to be able to, to read it. Um, was, is there a hearing? Um, and it's, you know, it starts by saying, oh, over here. Uh, yeah, is there an actual hearing? And, you know, once you get past the library director and you're starting with the personnel committee and then going on to the board, does the employee have the right to come to a, a, an actual hearing and speak in their own, uh, on their own they behalf. come before the personnel committee. Although I, I've never, I don't know what past practice is on this. So I, I can't tell you what was done. Mm -hmm. So it really, this really depends on what the personnel committee wants to do. 
Yeah, I mean, the, my question was because there was in the it starts out by saying the com personnel committee shall hear the appeal, and then it says they have to make a decision within five days of the meeting. So, I, I just want to make sure there actually is a hearing. Where are you? Step two. The last se uh, sentence or last two sentences. But oh, Robin, it says shall hear such appeal within thirty days. Right, but then it, then it talks about a meeting at the end. Is it so? It's an actual hearing, and do, do we want to say anything well, about the employee is, being able to attend? And it is a it's a it is a meeting though. It is a personnel meeting. I, I mean, I file meeting minutes and an agenda for it. Okay. I don't know if there's different rules if you're using the term hearing. A hearing would seem to indicate there was a a, a bunch of people there in the room where a meeting could be just one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, but it's saying the personnel committee. So it has to be everybody on the committee, right? Hmm. But what I'm asking though is, is meeting law change if it's called a hearing instead of a meeting? Hmm. We don't know the definition of hearing for that. Hear such an appeal. Hmm. Well, if you're having, if you're hearing the appeal, which you are in the first part of that sentence, right. then to suddenly just talk about the meeting didn't make sense to me because I think your hearing is at a meeting. And you'll note in step three, the, their next step is to go to the board and it doesn't say anything about it, a meeting or a hearing or anything. It just says the board will respond. So that makes it sound like they don't even necessarily, there's not a, an opportunity to be heard at that level, which I don't think is the, the intention. I mean, wouldn't we as a board, if it comes, if it ever gets to this point, wouldn't we as a board want to hear from the employee? So what if we said she'll conduct a hearing with the complainant? or something along those lines. Yeah, that sounds good. The personnel sh committee shall conduct the hearing. Yeah, I shall, yeah. Conduct a hearing. I'll conduct a hearing. Oh, no, wait, that doesn't in? work. Oh. Committee shall. Committee shall hear such a people. Adam. Yeah, I think it's okay the way it is, as long as everybody's okay with hearing at the end instead of meeting. I guess you could say, shall hear such appeal at a meeting of the committee within 30 days, at the beginning of the sentence. Or the personnel committee shall uh, conduct a meeting to hear the appeal. Uh, or hold a meeting to hear the appeal. Uh -huh. We'll convene to hear such an appeal. Sure. Okay, shall convene to hear, to hear such appeal within 30 days of the appeal. And in five days, then we change that from um, hearing back to meeting. Lost me for me. To hear such appeal within 30 days of the filing of the appeal. The personnel committee should submit its decision in writing to the library and to the employee within five days of the A meeting. Sounds better, doesn't it? Shall can the personnel committee shall convene to here, such appeal within 30 days. Yeah, okay. Shall submit its decision in writing to the employee in five days of the meeting. But there's nothing on here that says that, that um, the person making the complaint can come to the meeting, right? Well, you would go into executive session if they did to discuss it. Okay.
Okay. Anything else for step three? Well, that that was step two. Step oh, three. Sorry, step two. Yes. Yeah. All right, okay. scroll. Step three, we need to have the hearing process added, I guess the same way as the personnel, because right now it's just saying they appeal to the library director and then we just, we respond, but we, there's no time where we're actually hearing the hearing other than in the written complaint. So I think we should do, have the same language that we have for the personnel committee. Interesting. We give ourselves 30 days to decide the person. Right. Uh, 30 days is a long time. Yeah. Do we want to just have it all be five days? Or both of them processes be five days? But you might not be able to get a personnel committee together in five days. Or the library board. The employees and staff. Five days is not long. Five days of receipt of the written decision. That's when they have to file the appeal. So then yeah, that, that, that five days is fine. Yeah. And then up, I think we've got 15 days. I don't think you want to change, change the 30 days because you might want to consult a lawyer before issuing mm -hmm. your decision. You know, let's leave it 30. We can always do it unless if it's an if it's an, a matter that gets handled quickly. But you don't have to take 30 days. It says within 30 days, right? So I'm but I'm adding then after so then appeal and writing to the library board of directors with a copy to the library director. Then there I'm inserting a sentence. The library board shall convene to hear such appeal. Yeah. Is that correct? Okay. It is within 30 days. Okay. So can somebody explain? Okay, so the library board convenes to hear such an appeal within 30 days of the filing of the appeal. So that's 30 days. Then the library board shall respond in writing to the employee making the appeal within 30 working days of the date of the appeal. Something's, I'm, I'm not understanding the mechanics of that. So I get the fact that you know, within five days of the receipt of the written decision, the co complainant has to say, I'm not happy you know, I'm, I, 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 I want to go to the board of directors, right? So they, they, they appeal it in writing. Then the library board convenes to hear, to hear that appeal within 30 days. Right? Maybe we just have the same language as above, which is, says the personnel committee shall submit its decision in writing to make it 30 days instead of five. Make what 30 days, I'm sorry. That within 30 days of the meeting, that it, right above it says the personnel committee shall submit its decision in writing to the director and the employee within, now it says that's five days of the meeting. So maybe we make ours read exactly the same, except it's 30 days of the meeting. I'm confused. The library run, run the decision period from the meeting, not from the filing of the appeal. Just like the personnel committee has to decide within five days after the meeting, we would give ourselves 30 days to decide. 
after the meeting. Isn't that, what the, isn't that what the sentence means? The library board shall convene to hear such an appeal within 30 days of the filing of the appeal. Isn't that what that is? No, that's when we, we have the hearing. We make our decision within whatever period of time we want to make our decision. And right now, it, you're, you've started to make the point that why should it be 30 days from the date of the appeal? Shouldn't it be maybe 30 days from, oops, the, um, the hearing date? Well, we get it. Then we have 30 days to, to get convene to hear. Then the next sentence says we have 30 days to respond in writing to the employee. So isn't that 60 days? Yeah. Post? That's what my point. So the library board convenes to hear the appeal within 30 days. Then the, res the, the okay, so you hear it. Then after that 30 day window is over, there's another 30 days before that would get to the employee, correct? Yeah, well, a maximum 30 days. Right, a maximum of 30 days. So that's 60 days, is that right? Yeah, I just thought maybe it made sense to use the same kind of language that we have above in the, for the personnel committee and say, instead of tying it to the date of the appeal, tie it to when the hearing is held. Um, I know it seems long to you, but this way, if we can't get a special meeting of the board, then at least we typically have a library board meeting every 30 days. And then this way, if we need to run a decision by a lawyer, it gives us time in case we can't get a decision right away. Um, I can look at the union contract and see what the time frame is in there. I don't think it was really the time frame you were questioning, was it, Tia? Like, yeah, it is. That's exactly what I'm questioning. Do you think 60 days may be too long? You have an employee who has escalated it that far and yeah. got a 60 day cooling off period, essentially. I think that could be a real problem. Well, I would like to think we would speed up the process if we, I, we would be able to call the meeting sooner if we knew it was a, an emergency grievance. In um, the board, in the union contract, we have to, there's a whole thing about hearing the evidence, rendering our decision within 10 days following the hearing. Yeah. All right, so would you like me to change it to 10? Yes. Well, let's make it 10 days following the hearing of the, or following the meeting. Yeah, because then you, did, you rendered your decision. 10. Then you're getting it to the employee and then, you know, and then it's final, and I think that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. All right, step four. Everyone's okay with four? Yeah. All right, step five. And I, had, I just added the word or appeal because in the beginning it's just a complaint and then in the last two steps it becomes an appeal. Yeah. All right, then six. Move down to B. Why is it B after six? Number, the numbers aren't right. Wait a minute. Because I, I thought we should start with A being the introduction, and then we have the steps. Our step, you know, we have the step, sec, step, step, and the time limits numbered. And then this is going to be a, a different. Um, this is a different category. It's an initiation of a complaint contesting dismissal. This first part was not about dismissal. 
Okay, so this is going to be B. I, mean, I don't, I don't care if people feel it to be a different numbering system. I'm, I'm not wedded to that. I just. No, I was just, I was just confused because. It's, well, it's, if we're going to have another meeting this time, I will go through, fix all the numbers and letters, and then everyone can check that and approve that at the end. Okay. So my only change in B was, I think we had decided that it was not introductory period, it was probationary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then in um, the next section, the library director's grievance, um, it already says in writing. So I took out the second written reference. Yeah. And then, Question. The question was, is, isn't there shouldn't there be an opportunity for a hearing? Because there's there's no reference to hearing in here. Well, they have to meet because they they can't make a decision without having a meeting. Right, but if they can meet, they could, that doesn't mean that they are actually going to hear your complaint if you have one. Well, they have to reply to it, so they would have to meet. No, they'd have to meet, but you don't necessarily have the opportunity to come and speak to the committee or to the board. Well, actually, I do, because by law, you have to let, you'd have to let but, me in. No, but shouldn't we have, shouldn't we say that you're going to have a hearing? All right, where would you like me to add that, or how? I don't know. I'm, what does anybody else think? Should we say that there's a right to a hearing or is it implied? Why not copy what we do for the employee previously? Yeah, and you don't have to do it now. Well, if I don't do it now, oh. I won't. All right. <laughs> We're making too many changes for me to go back, go between paper and the, the All form. Right. All right. So the library board mm -hmm. shall, no, it's going to be the committee. Ooh, I'll just copy it. So do we want to keep it with 30 days? Let me just say before. So, so do I understand this correctly, that the personnel committee, if the library director has a grievance, it goes before the personnel committee, the personnel committee makes a decision, but does not involve the, the, the board of, the full board is not aware of this complaint, nor are they part of any sort of decision or made aware of that. Is that correct? Is that, I mean, am I interpreting that correctly? Shouldn't it go before the executive board? Yes, I mean, that's that's exactly my point, which is it should at least go be, I mean, personnel committee might review and come up with what they think the response should be, but that should at least go to the executive committee because otherwise the personnel committee is making a decision that impacts the whole that impacts everybody without people, without your executive even knowing that. And maybe we should talk about whether it should go, to, you know, we, the board hires the director. So should the personnel committee be the first stop? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I certainly could see, I mean, if you just think about it before we go into the words, if you just think about the process, if the library director has a concern, takes it to the personnel committee. The personnel committee reviews that and, you know, they may look at it and say, you know what, that's that's legitimate or whatever, but it should come, I would think, at least to the executive, if not to the full board, to explain what it is. The personnel committee may say. But Tia, the director needs to be able to grieve the decision. If it goes to, to the library board first, then there's no one to grieve it to. Did I lose to you? 
No, I, I'm I'm thinking about that. I mean, I'm just concerned that that you have a personnel committee that's making a decision about our our operations manager director, the person who's running this, and the library board is not consulted about it. Or, or they don't know about it. They aren't consulted about it. Um, it doesn't say that it goes to the library board, that they are at least aware that this has happened. Well, they would have to be. They'd have to report it back to the board just because they'd have to report their meeting. But they could have already made the, their decision because but it- They have making... to. They have to make their decision. Otherwise, it can't be grieved to the full board. I understand that, Megan. But what, what, what I'm saying is that the personnel committee has 10 days to make a decision. You may have just had the board meeting the day before. They make a decision. It, it, I, I mean, it just, there, there seems, maybe I'm wrong. It seems like there's some kind of disconnect here that the, the personnel committee is making that decision. And um, maybe I'm, I'm just too, con, I'm, I'm taking it too, too literally or, or something, not understanding it. But, but Tia, I think we have to remember that those are the charges of the personnel committee. So to me, it seems like that's the right uh, formula, the right uh, the right direction to go with a, a grievance. Um, and the personnel committee is made up of library board members anyway. Okay. <clears throat> All right, should I keep going down or is there anything else I want that we need to discuss? Well, we didn't say how quickly the library board is going to hear the appeal. Oh, okay. If the library board directors are sorry. We appeal to the library board, the board shall respond to the grievance. So you want to make the meeting with 30 days and response within 10 days, like we did for the staff? Where is that? Well, it makes sense to have a uniform, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, so the library board shall convene such a period of time. So you would just say, take, take out making the appeal. Okay, are we ready to go to 13? Yep. Okay. Let me just slide over. The first part is just wordsmithing. I don't, I'm assuming we can skip past that. Mm -hmm. um, my comment on what I took out was I thought that language was nearly not a policy. Um, I, I think we should just say that they have to do, they have to do this, make this report or notification, not why they have to make it. All right, I'm okay with that. Yeah. All 
right. Um, any issues with maintenance of salary schedules? No. <clears throat> And we have initial employment. Is there a reason on number three, the applications of uh, the or is not struck on that one? This is the last one. The last one. Okay, that's, I just. Um, did anybody have any issue with this section increments being taken out? Nope. No. Okay, then promotion. Good. Mm -hmm. Demotion. Nope. Then temporary reassignment. Hey, we've gotten what half a page done with that. Oh my God. <laughs> so, we've got three pages done. We're at three. Um, quick, question, quick question on this. So for temporary reassignment, um their pay and and um when the reassignment is over, they go back to their existing pay grade, correct? Yes. Is that, do we need to say that or is that enough implied? <coughs> Everyone's thoughts? Because I could easily see somebody coming and saying, well, I stepped into it temporarily. Now I have all this experience and yes, I've gone back to this other job, but you know, I have more experience. So, you know, whatever. Uh, I, I really think it should say that when you step back into your other role, you go back to that pay, that back to that pay level, unless, I mean. <clears throat> no, T, I think you're right. It needs to be clearer. Okay. Uh, so I, it's just I had a situation like this once, and it, it's made me very shy about All right, it. So just tell me how you want me to word this. Um, Robin might be better on the wordsmithing, but the point is, when 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 that temporary reassignment period is is over, and the employee returns to the position that they had previously, the rate of pay for the for I mean, that, that's good to you, but I. <laughs> you want to start again and, and yeah say it one more time to you oh god no i can't think if i can remember it i'm so sorry hold on um so um at 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 the conclusion of the temporary reassignment period Oh, wait, um, hold on. First day of the appointment. In the, so we're starting a new sentence at the conclusion of the temporary reassignment. Um, period or period. Uh, well, you've got to keep the, going with your thought there. Yeah. No, 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 no. P reassignment period. Oh, oh, oh OK. Yeah. Sorry. I thought you meant per. Per. <laughs> Put a period per. down. Period. Um, <laughs> reassignment period. Um, and the employee will return returns to their pre pre existing is not right. Uh, what did I say before? Uh, and the their regular position. 
Is that a term? There you go. Yes. Back to, and the employee to uh, the employee to return to their regular position at the pay level, pay grade. What what's the term that we use? Do we say pay grade, pay level, compensation level? The conclusion and well, How about just regular position and compensation? You're going to return to your compensation, right? There you go. Yeah, and just change with to will. Yeah. Right, perfect, Robin. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, over time. And hold on, Robin, you had a comment. My comment was just that, and you answered the question because it, it says, right now it says must approve any overtime. I think the implication is really not that you don't, you have to approve any overtime, but that you have to be your your approval has to be given for any overtime. Uh, library director. So really, I guess the non-exempt employees must request the prior approval. Right uh, of the library director or the directors. Can we just see where it says the supervisor shall indicate the reason for such overtime and the approximate of overtime required prior to the assigning of overtime hours? No, I just didn't like the language where it says that the library director must approve any overtime. So what do you want to do? Give how about must give prior approval? That, there we go. That would do it, right? Okay. Must give private or must uh, well then that's it's the same thing actually I just didn't want it to sound like you have to give the approval but she does yeah no you, but you have to, you have to be asked to approve it but this is making it sound like you have no oh, choice I have no choice okay um, oh uh, approval so what you're saying is approval of the overtime must be given prior to non-exempt uh, prior to um, uh, they really they have to ask for prior approval. Yeah. So should we say prior prior approval by it, the library director? Yes. Yeah. Start Required. it that way. Yeah. There you go. What did I just say? Prior director. <laughs> prior prior, prior approval. approval. Prior. Thank you. Prior approval. The library director representative. There was no center is required prior to overtime being worked or something like that. Prior approval by the library director at the recommendation of the supervisor. Prior overtime approval, right? Overtime approval by the library director at the recommendation of the supervisor is required. He's just required. For any non-exempt employees. There you go, for any, yeah, there you go. So after two, you just go up to, yeah. Wait, we should have kept that. Oh no, is it required to? No, we get rid of the two. Is required for four. exempt four, right? Yeah. For non-exempt employees of the library, the supervisor shall indicate the reason such a- For non-exempt employees of the library, okay. Okay. Why did it actually say the Okay, next section, number two, or of overtime, number two. And this is really hard to fit on one screen, so. Yeah. Overtime worked by non-exempt employees shall be compensated as follows. Sorry, guys. And that and that follows employment law in Connecticut, correct? I believe so. I, I can't confirm that right now. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, it's just, uh, I, I mean, I was just thinking that because our full-time employees work less than 40 hours, correct? Yeah, they work 35 hours. They work 35. So that's, there's a five hour delta between yeah. theirs and this. So I was assuming that that is Connecticut law and that's where that came from. I, I, I don't know that to be true one way or the other. Overtime work, but I don't think it's Connecticut law because non-exempt employees can work 45 hours one week and then work 25 the next. That's true. So I think this is our policy. Okay. okay. I'd have to check the town to see if maybe it's the towns. Okay. So should I keep going? Mm -hmm. um, in lieu of overtime pay. Is this for any employee? Yes. And did the contract, but is this non-represented employees or can it be represented employees as well? So at the beginning of 15, we say the collecting bargaining unit should refer to the collective bargaining agreement. So everything in, oh wait, oh, what page are we on? 15, nope. All right, so yeah, this entire section 15 is only for non-union employees. Okay, just making sure. Thank yeah, you. I think I'm just go back up and check and make sure. On here it is, 14, yep, 15, only non-union okay. employees. Okay. okay, I just wanted to make sure. All right, so where were we? Okay, longevity pay is next. That's fine. Um, should I keep going down to vacation? Yep. Um, actually, Megan, go back. I'm sorry, could you just go back? I think that the, um, keep going up a little. Yeah, that language was not supposed to be before the collective Okay. Let me take that out. Okay. So on H where it, it took out uh just moved that out longevity on the payroll. Okay, got it. Payroll date check first. I'll receive. Okay. All right. Vacation. So once again, this is for non non represent non union employees, correct? Yes. Okay. All right, anybody want to make any changes to full-time employees vacation language? I Just, you know, I can't see your faces, so I do need people to speak up. Um, it looks good. Okay, thank you, Terry. All right, <laughs> sorry, I can't have this up and see all your faces. I can only see one or two at a time, so if just people could let me know when they're done so I don't scroll away. I think you can keep going. Okay. This was a section that you, yeah. the next part, I said, I when I read this, I didn't understand what it meant, but you said it was from the union contract. It says full-time employees receiving 70 hours. What does that mean? Does anybody know what that would mean? I'm married to you. I'm I'm getting numb here. Wait a minute. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the club. 
And I mean, we don't have to follow the union contract. It was just easier to have all, because we have some full-timers in the union, some full-timers not. It seemed easier to keep all the full-timers the same, um, but we don't have to keep it this way if you don't, if you want to change it. So this is exactly as the unit union contract, Megan? Yeah. I couldn't copy and paste it because the file was locked, but I'm pretty sure I typed it as is. I can look though. I think we want to make sure that we give our, our um, non-union people as much as we give our union people. So it really, if, if it's, you know, if it's the same thing, it makes sense. All right, but what does the word receiving mean? I think that's just the union, that's the union language that they used. Um, I have no idea what it means. Robin, that was our compromise. We let them pick the language for this section. I, mean, I think it looks like the um, the time, you know, the, uh, the- We can uh, change it. Um, is, do you have a preference to something else? I don't even, I don't really know what the concept is. I think um, it, uh, full-time employees receiving 70 hours per year. Where are they receiving that from? What is the? Yeah. Well, I think, I, I, just I think. Changed. It, receiving to accrue, you're okay then. Just move the accrue up from the end of the sentence. Employees accrue 70 hours per year. Employees. I, is that really what that you're trying to say there? Full-time employees, it's saying full-time employee, what it really says is full-time employees get 70 hours per year, starting July 1st of each year, 70, get 70 oh, hours. No, that's not right. Hold no. on. Um, well, that's exactly what it says. In the union contract, it says on page seven, under article XII vacations, section 12.2 full-time accrual, section A, full-time employees receiving 70 in parens seven zero hours per year accrue commencing on July 1st of each year, seven hours per month for, for each of the first 10 months of the year. All right, I remember why it's worded this way. Can you, Mary, correct me if I'm wrong. All right. The, it's meant to mean that they will get 70 hours for the year as long as they complete the year, but they only accrue it over time. So yeah, they will be receiving. That's why Megan, yeah. yeah. Well, they have a, ba so, they have a bank, a, a potential bank of, of, they can get up to 70 hours, but they can only take it in increments of seven hours per month for the first 10 months of the year. No, it's not that they can take it, it's that they earn it in that rate. Um, okay, I'm sorry, that they earn it. That way if they leave, let's say they leave it six months, then they would owe back if they took more than they would have earned in six months. That's right. Yeah, now that, that was the concept behind it, Megan, yeah. yeah. The language is funky, but yeah, that's what you it You know means. what, it comes from, and now looking back, if you look in A in the beginning, it talks about each full-time employee who's completed one year but less than five years receives two weeks of vacation. Is that? Which would be 70 hours. So that's where the word receive comes from. Well, it actually, yeah, but it's also used in the union contract itself. That's, that's specifically, if you go to page seven of the union contract. Right, but in 12.1, it says, uh, each full-time employee who's completed one year, but less than five, receives 70 hours. We, we use two weeks. They use hours in, in part A, the equivalent of part A. Okay. So maybe if, I think we should either say two weeks or 70 hours, but not two different things in, different, in each place. In the union con, oh wait, this is not. Oh. The union contract does say in 12, in in the first part it says 70 hours and then the second part that it says 70 hours, like ours, ours says two weeks and 70 hours. And two okay, so the language is not the same in the union contract for full-time library employees. Well, oh, the, right. it's a, instead of two weeks vacation, it says 70 hours. All right, so I'm gonna change this to. 70 hours. 
and then the next one is 105 hours instead of three weeks. Um, no, just put 70 after the number 70 after the word 70. Yep. Yeah. Then three weeks. That becomes that 105. Yeah. And then the last one is 140 hours. So then that makes sense that they, they've received it. Yeah. Oops, 140 and you got 104. Yep. I'm trying to do it quickly and I'm switching things around. Okay, employee shall receive 140, 140 hours. Okay, Kate. Okay. And you want me to change the director as well? Might as well be consistent. I have any hours is that? It's 140, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, right, yep. It sounds, it sounds like so much more than four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and you deserve it. I don't get it, that's funny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. So now with changing that. Then that makes sense. Yep. It makes it uniform. All right. So then we have about 10 minutes left. Do we want to get through the end of vacation and then schedule the next meeting? Or do we want to stop now? We've got a lot more to go. So why don't we try to get as much done tonight as we can? Okay, so we'll get through part-time vacation and then we'll stop there and set the next meeting. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right, anyone have an issue with C? No. No. Okay, no. then we get to D. Except we, I have to change all that. Yeah. So change those to hours, right? All right. I'm just going to put a note at the top. Yes. Change to change hours. Days to hours. Okay. That way we can keep on. Yep. All right. E. Oh, I just asked why we have a definition here each week for. Uh, we, maybe we don't need it now that we've said hours instead of a week, right? Or is that what that relates to? No, we have to, to figure out how many. So like, let's say somebody, um, because part-timers don't get 35 hours. Um, or sorry, what is it? Yeah, 35 hours for a week. They get the average of their time. That becomes their week. So we need okay. a way to define what a week is for them. Actually saying that, hold on. Okay, I can't change days to hours for part-timers. Right. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I don't think you can, can you? No, nope. because it's defined, it right. actually is determined by the definition. Right, because if I work 12 and a half weeks and somebody else works 15, well, because each week they work a different number of hours. Right, right. But also they, people work, we didn't get the, everybody working the same number of hours. Yeah. So, so you could have somebody who on average does 12 hours a week or 12 and a half hours a week and somebody else who does 15 hours a week, right? And that's what this is trying to do. So it's and whatever that part times average number of um, hours that they work during the preceding calendar year. 
And this comes straight from the contract. So it's yeah. how it's defined in the contract. Yeah. And it makes sense. Oh, and H should be vacation time for permanent part-time employees. Excuse me. Okay, um, so I <laughs> must be vacation time for program shall be scheduled. Okay, must be a minimum of two hours taken. All right, is everyone okay with H? Yep. No. All right, yep. we go down to I. I had asked, sorry, I had asked whether there was any carryover and you said no. Um, uh, for part-timers, no, it's not in the yeah. contract, so we're not gonna offer do we it. Wanna, do we wanna say that there's no carryover? I think we, don't we say for full-time talk, talk about carryover or no? Um, but we do, we get them in a time frame. Um, I just thought maybe we should just, say that they can't carry over if they can't. Okay, so then add a, another letter. All right, uh, how would you like it worded? Um, these may not carry over time from year to year. May not carry over vacation time. Permanent part time, time please. please. Um, from the contract, it says permanent part-time employees are not permitted to carry over vacation hours from one calendar year to the next. To carry over vacation hours from one calendar year to the next. That way it's the same language. Yeah, okay. perfect. Okay. All right, Jay. Yep. And K. What was my comment? Was it, did I ask about death? Oh, yeah. And I looked up the town. It's not covered in the towns either. Okay. All right. They set the library alarm in eight minutes. Um, okay. So let's get K done. Oh, wait, no, it keeps going. Sorry. Um, can we schedule the next meeting? Yeah. Would anybody be willing to do the next meeting in person? It might speed this up. I'm not ready for person in person stuff yet. Okay. No, me neither. I'm not sure I ever will be, but I'm not right now. <laughs> um, next Wednesday, does that work for anybody? Sorry, when? Next Wednesday, the 26th. Doesn't Does work Sam for me. Doing that? What? Doesn't work for me. I have a commitment at night. Okay. Uh, how about Tuesday, the 25th? That's commitment that night. I can't do, uh, oh, wait, you said the what date? 25th. Oh, I'm in the wrong month. Hold on. Uh, the 20th, I can't do Tuesday nights. Okay. How about Wednesday the second? I can't do Wednesday the second. I can't do Thursday the third. <laughs> All so right. Thursday the 27th out? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be going away for the weekend. I wanna be oh. away that time too. Okay, yeah. okay. So the week of the seventh, how's that look for everybody? Okay. Is I can't do I can't do Monday, but Wednesday? right now I can do it the other night. I'm actually free every night that week except Tuesday. So Wednesday or Thursday? How are those dates for everybody? It works for me. 
9th or the 10th? What would be the date then? 9th or the 10th? Sounds good. Uh, how is everybody for the 10th? Good. Good. Okay, so six. Oh, I can't. I'm sorry. It's my husband's birthday. Oh, no. <laughs> so unhappy. Okay. The 9th? 9th is work, works for me. I can hear. What was that? I may not be here on the, on the 9th. Would you mind if we met without you, Terry? <laughs> no, would, I would love you would, it. <laughs> you would pay, pay us to not have to do it. All right. Do you want to try for earlier, like a half hour earlier? Yes. Well, I would prefer that. I could prefer we, earlier. I, what's the earliest everyone could do? 530? 530. 530 would, um, oh. Uh. Six. How about six? Usually five thirty would work, but I I'm a, I have a conference that's over at five o'clock, and I'd really like a little bit of time to. So six on the ninth. Six would work for me. Okay. Good. Oh, is that good for you? Good. So June ninth, six p.m. Yes. Okay. So that's our next meeting date. Does anybody have anything else or can, should we take a motion to adjourn? All right. Hearing no objection. Would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? I would. Good. Thank you, <laughs> Terry. Second, anybody? I'll second it. Can I second it? Robin, thank you. Oh, I, don't think I, can do it. I don't think I could do it. Yeah. Okay. All in favor. Uh, Aye. All right. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I will send out the revisions early next week. So you have a more recent copy of our changes. And then Robin, I'm just going to go ahead and send these minutes tomorrow morning because they have to be in by noon. That's fine. I don't think there's too much that you can say that any of us would find fault mm -hmm. with. Nothing at all. Oh. <laughs> All right, I'm coming, I'm coming. All right, have a good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you.